Was ist mit einem Gebet an? Lieber Vater im Himmel, ich danke dir für diesen neuen Tag des Lebens, für dieses Morgenstudium. Danke, Vater, dass du uns retten willst. Und danke, dass die Wahrheit die Kraft hat, uns heilig zu machen. Und uns von dieser Knechtschaft der Sünde zu befreien. Und ich möchte dich jetzt bitten, Vater, dass du kommst und uns lehrst. Und dass du Bruder Mark hilfst, dass er die Gedanken auf die beste mögliche Art darlegt. Und hilf uns, dass wir aufmerksam sind und offene Herzen haben, die Wahrheit zu erhalten. damit wir durch sie beeindruckt werden und dadurch verändert werden können. Bitte segne auch die Übersetzung und die Technik und all die Leute, die sich bemühen, diese Botschaft zu verstehen. Und hilf ihnen, dass sie offene Herzen haben, die Wahrheit empfangen und all die Zweifel von ihrem Verstand entfernen können. Und ich habe in Jesu Namen gebetet. Amen. Okay, so this morning we're going to um, look about this human heart, right? Heute Morgen werden wir uns das menschliche Herz anschauen. And it's um, the, the new covenant. What what is the new covenant? Und was ist der neue Bund? Well, if you go to the new covenant, that might be true, but if you go to the new covenant, that's not what it says. So I'm asking, what, what is the new covenant? It's when he writes the law upon your heart, right? That's what it says, right? Okay, so go, go to... Um, Genesis chapter 6. Geht zu 1. Mose 6. In Vers 5. In Vers 5. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Right? So this is man after he fell. Right? Das ist der Mensch, nachdem er gefallen ist. And Therefore, this is us, right? Deswegen, das sind wir. I mean, there is only holy people and unholy people, es right? Gibt nur heilige Menschen und unheilige Menschen. Right? And we understand that we are under this Galatians 4 experience so that we can come out of this unholiness, right? Und wir verstehen, dass wir unter der Galater 4 Erfahrung sind, damit wir aus dieser Unheiligkeit herauskommen können. <coughs> okay, so that we must... <coughs> Take this, what it says in Genesis 6 and verse 5, very seriously. Right? That instead of being, instead of having that enmity against evil, we are at enmity against God. Right? And in Jeremiah 17, verse 9, it says, The heart is deceitful. Above all things, desperately wicked, and who can know it? Why does it say at the end there, who can know it? Warum sagt es am Ende, wer kann es erkennen? No, your own heart, we're talking about your own heart, that's true. I, I can't read yours, but you, you know what's going on in your own heart, right? Also, um, du kannst wissen, was in deinem eigenen Herzen stattfindet. Das 
certainly okay. agree. Yeah. In your own heart? I don't need to certainly agree. Okay, that's why I'm asking, when it says who can know, we're dealing with our heart, not other people's, right? Also, we sprechen jetzt nicht über, we können nicht wissen, was in einem anderen Herzen um, vorgeht, sondern in unserem eigenen können wir das wissen. No, that's not what I'm saying. You're no? not paying attention. No, what I'm just saying, we're dealing with our heart, right? Also, wir handeln mit unserem Herzen. You don't know anything that's going on in anybody else's heart, right? Du weißt nicht, was irgendetwas geschieht in dem anderen Herzen Okay, Her and I'm asking this question, why does it say, who can know it, speaking about your heart? Und ich frage diese Frage, warum steht dort, wer kann es erkennen, und wenn du über dein eigenes Herz sprichst? No, it says because the heart is deceitful, right? Weil es sagt, das Herz ist trügerisch. Okay, De deception. What is deception? Also, um, Verführung. Was ist, was ist Verführung? Okay, when you're deceived. Yes, when you're deceived, you, you imagine something, but it's not really what you imagine. Also, right? wenn du verführt bist, dann, dann denkst du, um, stellst du dir was vor, was in Wirklichkeit nicht so ist. So, it's teaching you about the, the heart. The heart will make you think a certain way that you believe something, but you don't really know what, because the heart is deceiving you. That's the point, right? Also, um, du denkst dann etwas über dich, um, was aber nicht so ist, weil das Herz dich eben verführt. Okay, so it says, a man that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Right? Und sagt, ein Mensch, der in sein eigenes Herz betraut, ist ein Tor. So, the whole purpose of the, the gospel of the Galatians 4 experience is to teach man to stop trusting in himself and start trusting in God, right? The ganze Zweck der Galater 4 Erfahrung ist, dass der Mensch nicht mehr länger in sich selbst vertraut, sondern lernt in Gott zu vertrauen. Right? Self dies, Christ lives. Das Selbst stirbt und Christus lebt. Okay, so go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Gehen wir zu 2. Korinther 6. Verse 14. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Now the Lord uses the natural to teach us the spiritual. Right? So in some sense, right, he gives us plain instructions not to marry an unbeliever. Right? So in gewissen Sinne gibt er uns ähm, eine äh, klare Anweisung, dass wir nicht Ungläubige heiraten sollen. Because your, your minds must be the same, right? Weil euer Verstand muss derselbe sein. Right? And many of us in this movement realize how true that is, right? When your minds are not the same, right? Viele von uns in der Bewegung, sie realisieren, wie ähm, wahr das ist, wenn eben der Verstand nicht derselbe ist. Okay. It says, and what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? So now it uses the what it's trying to bring us to understand, right? Und jetzt ähm, benutzt es das, was, so was es uns führen will, zu verstehen. Okay, because a woman in Bible prophecy is representing doctrine, right? Und eine Frau in der biblischen Prophetie stellt Lehre dar. So if you, if you yoke yourself with false doctrine, they're idols, right? Wenn du dich mit falschen Götzen unterjochst, dann sind das mit falschen Lehren unterjochst, dann sind das Götzen. Okay, so what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. This is when he writes his law on your heart, right? Wenn er sein Gesetz auf dein Herz schreibt. Okay. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. So what is it that you have to separate yourself from? Also, wovon sollst du dich trennen? Yes, from, from every false way, right? Von um, jedem falschen Weg. Saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Right, so we've got to become a clean temple. Right? How do we become clean? Through what means? What does the Bible say? How are you cleaned? So, sorry, Scott? Sanctified by the 
Heilige sie durch deine Wahrheit, dein Wort ist Wahrheit. So the word is to become your guide and not your own evil heart. Right? Also das Wort muss dein Führer werden und nicht dein eigenes böses Herz. Okay, and as we walk according to every word of God, it sanctifies us, it removes all these wrong ways from us, right? Wenn wir dann nach jedem Wort Gottes wandeln, dann heiligt das uns das ähm, entfernt dann jeden falschen Weg von uns. Okay, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Gehen wir zu 1. Korinther 6. Vers 15. Vers 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. So the harlot in the Bible is this woman, right? Also die Hure in der Bibel ist diese Frau. These false doctrines. Diese falschen Lehren. So if you join yourself to them, you become one. Also right? wenn du dich mit ihnen verbindest, dann wirst du eins. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Right? So... The, the human temple, the, the evil heart, right, has to be only um, righteous things dwelling in there, right? Also der menschliche Tempel, um, da, so von dem bösen Herzen, da sollte eigentlich nur das Gerechte in, darin wohnen. So anything that's not according to thus saith the Lord is an idol. Also alles, was nicht gemäß einem so spricht der Herr ist, ist ein Götze. Right, and if you join yourself to that idol, you become one. Right? Und wenn du dich mit diesem Götzen verbindest, dann wirst du eins werden. Okay, so yesterday, when we were looking at this, this, at this role when it came forth. Und gestern, wo wir uns diese Rolle, die Buchrolle angeschaut haben, als sie hervorgebracht wurde. Okay, we know it gets opened right here. Right? Wir wissen, dass sie hier geöffnet wird. And then this trumpet message is warning us about What's coming. Und dann warnt uns diese Posaunenbotschaft über das, was kommt. Okay, and it says that, the, that this, this flying roll will enter into the house of the thief and him that sweareth falsely by, my, by his name, right? Und es sagt, dass diese fliegende Rolle wird in das Haus dessen eintreten, der, ähm, also des Diebes und der, der falsch bei seinem Namen schwört. Okay, we know that the, this flying roll is the law. Und wir wissen, dass diese fliegende Buchrolle das Gesetz ist. Right. So the Lord wants to put the law into our hearts, right? Also der Herr möchte das Gesetz in dein Herz tun. Which is the blessing. Was der Segen ist. But if there's anything evil in there, right, the law will destroy it, right? Aber wenn da noch etwas Böses darin ist, dann wird da das Gesetz es zerstören. Right, because the law is holy. Weil right? das Gesetz ist heilig. Okay, so we know if you're attached to your sin, you will get destroyed with the brightness of Christ, right? Und wir wissen, dass wenn du mit deiner Sünde, ähm, an deiner Sünde haftest, dann wirst du durch, die, ähm, durch den Glanz Christi dann zerstört werden. Okay, Proverbs chapter 23. Sprüche 23. Verses 16. Verse 6 bis 8. It says, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meat, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Right? So, you're not to accept anything that's false, right? Du solltest nichts annehmen, was falsch ist. Or you'll also lose... That which is sweet. Right? Das verlieren, was süß ist. Okay, so it's, it's always about this true and false messages, right? Es geht immer um diese wahre und falsche Botschaft. Okay, now go to Ezekiel chapter 7. Gehen wir zu Ezekiel 7. Verse 5. Vers 5. 
It says, Thus saith the Lord God, An evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come, the end is come, it watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. So, what's the Lord going to recompense his people for? Also, für was wird, um, oder, ja, weswegen wird der Herr seinem Volk heimzahlen? For the abominations, right? Ihre Kreue, Which are in their heart, die in right? Ihren Herzen sind. It says, and mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smite it. Right? So, we know, or we understand, it says, the, the end is come. Right? And this trumpet is blown all the way down until we get to the other end. Right? Die Posaune bläst um, die ganze Zeit hindurch, bis wir zu dem anderen Ende kommen. R right? It's so where he's going to pour out his fury. Da wird er seinen Zorn ausgießen. Why is he going to pour out his fury? Or upon whom is he going to pour his fury? Also, auf wen wird er seinen Zorn ausgießen? Und warum? Yes, so those, that, that, those that have not that have refused to let go of those abominable things in their heart, right? Okay. So, so, so we have the, the, the flying roll, right? Is this flying roll When it's, when it's opened, it reveals things to you, right? Okay, and it gives you, it gives you an opportunity to put those things right. right? Okay, right, so, go to Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 10. It says, And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God. How are they written? Wie werden sie geschrieben? The finger of God, right? Mit dem Finger Gottes. Now remember, when we looked at this, the investigative judgment that was upon Achan, right? Und erinnert euch, wir haben uns das angeschaut, das Untersuchungsgericht über Achan. Began with the casting of the lots, right? Das begann ja mit diesem Werfen der Lose. Right, and it didn't immediately point at him, right? Das hat dann nicht sofort auf ihn hin. It gave him time, right? As it was going down, it gave him time to search his heart, right? But eventually, when it came to him, is what pointed at him? The finger of God. Okay, it was God's law, right? Right, it says here that... The two tables of stone are written with the finger of God, right? Sagt, die zwei steinernen Tafeln wurden mit dem Finger Gottes beschrieben. Okay, and go to Exodus 32. Gehen wir zu 2. Mose 32. Vers 15. Vers 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The, the tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other side were they written. The tables were the work of God and the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. So how is the, this law written? Wie wird dieses, oder wie ist dieses Gesetz geschrieben? On both sides. Auf beiden Seiten. And therefore it is the flying roll, right? Deswegen ist es die fliegende Buchrolle. Okay, because we know that these two tables, write the vision and make it plain upon tables, right, is... They are the prophetic illustration of God's law. Wir wissen, dass diese zwei Karten, also die zwei Tafeln, weil er sollte die Vision schreiben und deutlich auf Tafeln machen, dass es diese prophetische Darstellung von Gottes Gesetz. Okay, so this is all directly linked together, right? Das ist alles direkt miteinander verknüpft. Okay, so. Go 
Go to Matthew 22. Gehen wir zu Matthäus 22. Vers 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. How do we love God? Wie lieben wir Gott? With our mind, right? Verstand. So when our mind has idols in it, we don't love God. Also wenn wir unser Verstand Götzen in sich hat, dann lieben wir Gott nicht. Right? It says, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, so we see it here that the, the law is written on both sides, right? And it's this role that's been unrolled to us right here, right? That's revealing things to us, right? Dinge uns offenbart. That it's revealing to us also what's coming. Sie offenbart uns auch, was kommt. And it's given us an opportunity like Aiken to search our hearts. Und es gibt right? uns eine Möglichkeit, so wie Aachen, unser Herz zu erforschen. But soon that finger is going to come and point directly at us. Aber right? bald wird dieser Finger kommen und direkt auf uns zeigen. And unless all self is laid in the dust, right? Es sei denn, dass das ganze Selbst in den Staub gelegt wird. <coughs> okay, go to, um, go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Gehen wir zu 5. Mose 6. In Vers, 5. In Vers 5. This is where these Christ took this great commandment from, right? Daher hat Christus dieses große Gebot genommen. It says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. This is the first Great commandment, right? Das ist das erste große Gebot. This is the commandment, what it means to love God, right? Das ist das Gebot, was be ähm, es bedeutet, Gott zu lieben. So in order to love God, which is the first four commandments, we must empty the temple from all idols, right? Damit wir Gott lieben können, was die ersten vier Gebote sind, müssen wir unseren ähm, Tempel reinigen von all, allen Verunreinigungen, also von allen Verunreinigungen. From all idols. Also right? von allen Götzen. Right, so, right here, this message that's going forward, right, is the midnight cry message, right? Und hier diese Botschaft, die vorwärts geht, ist die Mitternachtsrufbotschaft. Which is the triumphal entry. Und das ist auch der triumphale Einzug. Right? And the triumphal entry went all the way until here. What happened when they got here? Und der triumphale Einzug, der ging, fand hier die ganze Zeit statt, bis hier, was geschah hier. When Christ entered them through the gates, what happened? As Christus durch die Tore ritt, was geschah? Probation closed, right? Die Gnadenzeit hat sich geschlossen. Then what did he immediately do? Und was hat er dann sofort getan? What was the next thing that he did in the prophetic narrative? Was war das nächste, was er in der prophetischen Erzählung tat? He cleansed the temple, right? Er hat right? den Tempel gereinigt. Okay, keep that in your mind, right? Also behaltet das im Sinn. And when he cleansed that temple, all those who were unrighteous fled from his presence, right? Als er den Tempel gereinigt hat, dann sind alle die, die ungerecht waren, von seiner Gegenwart geflohen. Okay, you can't abide in the presence of holiness with unrighteousness in your heart, right? Du kannst nicht in der Gegenwart der Heiligkeit wohnen mit Ungerechtigkeit in deinem Herzen. Okay, so go to Exodus chapter 20 and let's look at this. Law, right? Mose 20 und schauen wir uns dieses Gesetz an. Vers 2. It says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Who are you not to have any gods before? Vor wem solltest du keine Götter haben? Before him, right? Vor ihm. So we're going to look at who he is, right? Wir schauen uns jetzt an, wer er ist. Right, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Gehen wir zu 2. Korinther 11. Vers 2. Vers 2. It says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. So who is God? Wer ist Gott? Jealous. He's this jealous God, er right? Er ist dieser eifersüchtige Gott. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Right? So... 
And when you when you go down to the the next commandment, right? Wenn wir zum nächsten Gebot gehen. Uh, in verse 4. 2. Mose 20, Vers 4. It says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a what? Jealous, Jealous God, right? Ich bin ein eifersüchtiger Gott. So, in the first commandment, he's telling you who he is. He's this jealous God, right? In den ersten Geboten, da sagt er dir, wer er ist. Er ist dieser eifersüchtige Gott. And you're to have no other gods before him, du right? Du sollst keine anderen Götter neben oder vor ihm haben. Okay, and then he's explaining to you what these gods are in the second commandment, right? In dem right? zweiten Gebot erklärt er dir dann, was diese ähm, Götter sind. Äh, ja. Explaining you. What they are, right? Okay, it says, For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Right, so if you have idols in your heart, you hate God, right? So we just have to accept that, that that's our condition, right? But it says, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Right? This is going to show mercy to you. Right? Also, er wird dir Gnade zeigen. Okay. So, <coughs> um, so we understand that these idols are these false doctrines. Right? Wir verstehen, dass diese Götzen diese falschen Lehren sind. Because the, the, the new covenant is when you hate every false way. Weil right? der neue Bund ist, wenn du jeden falschen Weg hast. Okay, so, next commandment. Nächstes Gebot. Taking his name in vain, right? Sein Name um, zu missbrauchen. It says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. His name is his character, right? Sein Name ist sein Charakter. So, you, proclaiming anything about the Lord which is false, right? You're, you're taking his name in vain, right? Das bedeutet, wenn du irgendetwas Falsches über seinen Namen, also über den Herrn verkündest, was nicht, äh, also was falsch ist, dann nimmst du seinen, missbrauchst du seinen Namen. Okay, and the, the fourth commandment. Das vierte Gebot. Vers 8. Vers 8. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And if you go to Hebrews chapter 4, Gehen wir zu 4 verses 9 and 10, 9 bis 10. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works. Right? So when you get into this rest, you've ceased from all your own ways and you're now living by every word of God. Right? Und ähm, du lebst jetzt nach jedem Wort Gottes. Everybody follow. Kann jeder folgen. Okay. So, now we're going to look at the counterfeit, our condition, right? Jetzt schauen wir uns die Fälschung an, also unseren Zustand. Because in Ezekiel 7, he says, the end has come and he's going to shortly pour out his fury upon all our abominations, Weil right? Weil in Ezekiel 7 sagte, das Ende ist gekommen und er wird in Kürze seinen Zorn über uns aus. Okay, so let's go to Ezekiel 8 and look at those abominations. Gehen wir zu Ezekiel 8 und schauen uns diese Gräuel an. Verse 4. Vers 4. It says, And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plains. Where does it take you back to? Wohin bringt dich das zurück? To Ezekiel 1, right? Zu Ezekiel 1. So, Ezekiel 1's vision was here, right? Ezekiel 1, die Vision war hier. And what did Ezekiel see here? Was hat Ezekiel hier gesehen? 
Well, that might be what it illustrates, but just let's stick with what the Bible says. What did he see? I saw the whirlwind come in, right? Which is the punishment, right? Okay, but what was what was illustrated and what did he see? He saw a throne, he saw Christ sitting on the throne, right? It was a day of rain. And there was a rainbow about the throne, right? right? And he saw these four cherubims, right? Right? Okay, that, that, that's what he saw and it was this great warning to him that this whirlwind was coming. Right? We know the whirlwind is this northern army that's coming, right? But we know the northern army has already come, right? So it's already come, but it's what he's going to do, right? Okay. It says... Because, okay, so we read verse 4 again. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. So it's taking you back to Ezekiel 1, right? Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of this altar, the image of jealousy in the entry. So what do we see? An image of jealousy, right? But this is a counterfeit, right? R right? It's, it's an evil, Satan's version of jealousy. Okay, no, not like the Lord loving you with a godly jealousy. Okay, so... He's going to reward us according to our abominations. And the first abomination is this counterfeit jealousy. Okay, right. And what was the second commandment? Because the first commandment was that you shall love no other idol before me, this jealous God, right? Der erste Gebot war dann, dass du keine ähm, Götzen neben mir haben solltest, neben diesem ähm, äh, eifersüchtigen Gott. So, what's this, what was the second command? Was war das zweite Gebot? What, sorry? No, okay, you're not to make any graven images, right? Du sollst keine ähm, ja, Bildnisse machen. You're not to bow down nor serve them. Right? Du sollst dich nicht niederbeugen noch ihnen dienen. Okay, so let's look here. Verse 10. Schauen wir uns hier an Vers 10. So I went and then saw and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And where is Ezekiel being taken into? Und wohin wird Ezekiel gebracht? Okay, that's my what it illustrates, but where was he taken? To the temple, right? Okay, we already read that, know you not that ye are the temple of the living God, right? So we know that the temple is the heart, right? As the mind, right? That's where the Lord wants to dwell, right? But here, it says there's all these abominable idols, right? And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shapham, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. What are they doing? Okay, so what, what is that? Is that What's the burning incense? Was dieser brennende Weihrauch? Does it mean? It's, okay, it's prayers, right? Gebete. Okay, so they've got all these abominations in their heart and they're doing this work of praying, right? Sie haben all diese Gräuel in ihren Herzen, sie tun dieses Werk des Betens. But he says in verse 12, Vers 12 sagt es aber, 
Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. Now, are they, are they literally saying that? Sagen Sie das buchstäblich? Okay. Maybe, maybe and if you bring things together, but I'm just asking you, why does it say, for they say the Lord seeth us not? Why does it say that? What are they doing? They're praying, right? But yet, what's in their hearts? All right, so okay. When, when the seal is opened, right? right the seal is this roll opened, right? Okay, it's in Ezekiel, it's in Revelation chapter 8. What has taken place then? In, in Revelation 8, what's taken place when the book is opened? Intercession. Okay, the, the, the prayers are ascending up, right? So they are, they are doing the same work, right? Okay, so the, the, the work is here to cleanse the heart of all idols, but they are praying with hearts filled with idols, right? And brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that this is speaking about us, right? Right, that this is our condition, right? Okay, so, um, go to Ezekiel chapter 8 and, and verse 14, sorry. So what was the next commandment? Was war das Not to take the Lord's name in vain. Right? Namen nicht zu okay, so it says, Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat there women weeping for Tammuz. What are they doing? Was tun sie? They're weeping. Sie weinen. So they're, they're, they're praying, sending their prayers up to the Lord, and they're also weeping, right? But who are they weeping for? Tammuz, right? He's a false god, right? Right, so, and if you just go to Matthew chapter 15. Just to bring it in context, because they would the ones saying, Lord, Lord, have we not done this and this in your name, right? So it says here, they're weeping for Tammuz, but when you bring it to our time, no, none of us is literally weeping. No, this is what I'm, this is what the point I'm, I'm making, right? Why is the, why does the Lord say, for they say, the Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. Why, why, why does it say that? Ask this question. Because they don't realize that that they have the false own Christ that they're worshiping. Yes, by their actions, by these evils in their heart, and praying to God, they're saying, the Lord doesn't see what's in my heart. Right? The Lord has forsaken the earth. It doesn't matter what's in my heart. I can still pray and he'll accept me. Right? Also, sie beten zwar Gott an, aber in ihren Herzen sind immer noch diese Götzen und ähm, deswegen sie beten einen falschen Christus ihrer eigenen Vorstellung an. Okay, this comes back to the point that Lawrence is making here. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Das kommt dann zu dem Punkt zurück, in den Lawrence gemacht hat. Haben wir nicht in deinem Namen geweissert? But what does the Lord say? Was sagt ähm, der Herr? Go away from me, I, I don't know you, right? Ähm, weicht von mir, ich kenne euch nicht. Okay, so das... The, The, the work to do in this time is to pray and to sigh and cry, right? But you're not to take the Lord's name in vain. Okay, because if you go to Matthew 15, verse 7, it says, ye hypocrites. What's a hypocrite? 
somebody who makes a profession but inside their heart is dead man's bones right? dann, um, was vorgibt, aber in Herzen sind Toten it says well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips so what do they do was tun sie? No, read what they draw nigh. Sie nähern sich. What was the command? Was war das Gebot? Draw nigh unto the Lord that he would draw nigh unto thee, Ihr right? Nähert euch Gott, dass er euch sich euch naht. So they are drawing nigh with their mouth. Sie right? nähern sich mit ihrem Mund. They honor me with their lips so that they are praying, right? Sie yes. beten hier. But where is their heart? Und wo ist ihr Herz? Far from it, right? Weit weg von their heart is on their idols, right? Ihr Herz ist auf ihr And what does it say in verse 9? Was sagt es in Vers 9? But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Right? So it's vain worship, right? Es ist nichtige Anbetung oder umsonst. Es gibt auch einen Vers in Hesekiel 33, wo es was Ähnliches sagt. Gehen wir zu Hesekiel 33. Vers 31 bis 33. Das And they come unto thee as the people cometh. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one of of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Yes, it's interesting. That, that verse, verse 31, I want to read it. <laughs> I was sitting there when you were talking last night because I saw the same thing. But yes, you, 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 you see the same point, right? I can see that it's the same point. Okay, so you can see that God's professed people are setting up a counterfeit, right? They hear what God says to them, but they don't do it. Right? How often are we praying and our mind is elsewhere on all sorts of other evils? Right? Arten von Bösen gerichtet. Okay, we need to confess that. Right? Wir müssen das bekennen. Okay. So, and, and the, the, the fourth commandment was the Sabbath, right? Und das vierte Gebot war der Sabbat. So, go to Ezekiel 8, verse 16. Gehen wir zu Ezekiel 8 und Vers 16. It says, He brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east and they worship the sun toward the east. Right, now, when you're between the porch and the altar, what are you doing? When you're between the porch and the altar, what are you doing? Sorry. I see the battery. Shoot. Okay. Shoot. Shoot. But you're, 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 all those things might be right, sir, but I'm just, deal with the, the, the object. When you, when you, if there's a porch and an altar, when you came to it, what were you to be doing between the porch and the altar? Sorry? Sacrifice. Right, making a sacrifice, right? And the sacrifice that was made, how was it to be? Okay, without blemish, right? And what I want you to see, right, is that Ezekiel, when he's given this vision, he's taken back to the beginning, right? Was ich euch sehen lassen möchte, hier Hesekiel, wenn ihm die Vision gegeben wird, er wird hier zum Anfang zurückgebracht. Right, and he's given these stages, right, of this, these four abominations, right? Und werden dann diese um, Stadien um, gezeigt von den vier Gräulen. 
Okay, and he's brought down to this fourth one where they're between the porch and the altar. Dann wird er zu dem vierten gebracht, wo sie zwischen der Säulenhalle und dem Altar sind. No, it says but go, so go down to verse 18. Geht jetzt hinunter zu Vers 18. It says therefore will I also deal in fury, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. So what's happened? Was ist geschehen? Okay, the door has closed, ja, right? Door is right? Because at midnight it will be seen who made the preparation, right? Wird es werden, wer die And the preparation is to cleanse the heart from all filthiness of the flesh, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord, right? Die, um, Vorbereitung ist, dass man sich von aller Unreinheit des Fleisches reinigt und die Heiligkeit in der Furcht des Herrn vervollkommt. Okay, so right here, the Lord is doing the triumphal entry and right in here he comes to cleanse the temple, right? Und hier äh, tut der Herr diesen triumphalen Einzug und dann kommt er hierher, um den Tempel zu reinigen. And here, at this very same point, there's these 25 men bowing down between the porch and the altar and the Lord closes their probation, right? Und hier genau an diesem Ort ist dann äh, diese 25 Männer, die zwischen Säulenhalle und Altar sich niederbeugen und dort schließt der Herr dann die Tür über sie. Because they give a false they provide a false offering, right? Weil sie bringen eine falsche Opfergabe. Über. And the 25 men is the high priest and 24 others, right? Und die 25 Männer, das ist der Hohepriester und 24 andere. R right? Okay. So, go to Joel chapter 1. Gehen wir jetzt zu Joel 1. Verse 2. Vers 2. It says, Hear this, ye old men, and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land, hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers. Tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation so how many generations Wie viele Generation? four four right Vier. now joel is here right joel steht ja hier. and he's telling them tell your children down to four generations Und right er sagt ihnen dann, sagt es euren Kindern, bis zu vier generationen. so we know that these four generations are paralleled to these four abominations, wir wissen, right? Diese vier sind mit den vier Because we read in the law, the Lord forgives iniquity until the, the yet to the fourth, right? Weil, ähm, der Herr sagt im Gesetz, dass er ähm, Ungerechtigkeit bis ins, in die vierte Generation vergibt. Yet to the fourth generation, probation closes, right? Zur vierten Generation kommst, dann schließt sich die Gnade. And in Genesis 15, verse 16. In 1. Mose 15, Vers 16. It says, but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. When is it full? Wann ist es voll? Yes, but according to Ezekiel 8. Yes, when you when you're brought to this point and you're presenting this as an offering to the Lord and you're bowing down before the Son, right? Wenn du zu diesem Punkt ankommst und das als Opfergabe dem Herrn ähm, gibst und dann zur Sonne dich niederbeugst. Okay, so Joel, right? Vers 4, sorry. Also, okay, lesen wir noch Chapter 1, Vers 4. Joel 1, Vers 4. It says, that which the palmer one hath left, past tense. Das ist Vergangenheit. Hath the locust eaten, that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. Right? These four insects, right? Und die vier Insekten. So we know that he's in the time of the fourth, right? Wir wissen, right? er ist in der Zeit des vierten. Because the fourth has now come upon the land. Right? The northern army has come upon my land. Right? But then in Joel 2 verse 1 he says, Blow the trumpet for the day of the Lord cometh. Right? 
Lasst in die Posaune, weil der Tag des Herrn kommt. Right? So, when, when it's here, he's now telling them down to four generations, right? Wenn er hier ist, dann sagt es ihnen jetzt hinunter bis zu vier Generationen. Right? Okay, remember, we were talking about this 400 years in captivity, right? Erinnert euch, wir haben über diese 400 Jahre Gefangenschaft gesprochen. Or 430 if you go right from the beginning. Oder 430, wenn man ganz zum Anfang geht. Is, it, is that repeated in here? Wird das hier wiederholt? Remember Ezekiel was to lie on one side and the other side for 430 days, right? Erinnert euch, Ezekiel sollte auf einer Seite und dann auf der anderen liegen für 430 Jahre der Tage. Right? It's the same principle, right? It's the same principle. The same you have in here. When you come in the last message, they are also getting a chance down to four generations, right? It's also the same principle. When here the Botschaft gegeben wird, da haben sie auch noch eine Möglichkeit oder eine Chance, diese vier Generationen hinunter. Okay, go to um, Revelation four. Gehen wir zur Offenbarung vier. Okay, so verse one. Vers eins. It says. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So where are we? Right, so, John is here now, right, and he's going to get shown things that are what? Also Johannes steht jetzt hier und ihm wird gezeigt, also Dinge gezeigt, die was, was damit geschehen. Okay, things that are going to shortly come to pass. Die in Kürze geschehen sollen. Where are those things going to shortly come to pass? Wo werden diese Dinge in Kürze geschehen? Hier, right? Hier. Okay. So, now I think we've misunderstood some things here, but we'll see in a minute. Go to Malachi chapter 3. Ich denke, wir haben da ein paar Dinge missverstanden, aber wir werden das noch anschauen. Gehen wir jetzt erst zu Malachi 3. Vers 1. Vers 1. It says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. Where does that begin? Wo fängt das an? Same place, right? This is this message that's coming forward. He is preparing the way for the Lord, right? Das ist die Botschaft, die hier vorwärts geht und das vorbereitet den Weg für den Herrn. It says, the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. And that's right here, right? Das ist dann genau hier. So he suddenly comes to his temple. What does he find here? Er kommt plötzlich zu seinem Tempel und was findet er hier vor? 25 men worshiping the sun, right? 25 Männer, die die Sonne anbeten. Okay. It says, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? What is he now? Was ist er jetzt? Appearing. It's the appearance, right? Er erscheint. Das ist die Erscheinung. For he is like a refiner's fire, and like full of soap, and he shall do what? Was wird er tun? He shall sit. Er wird sitzen. Right? So he's going to sit right here, right? Er wird hier sitzen. He's going to suddenly come to his temple. Er wird plötzlich zu seinem Tempel kommen. And he's going to sit. Und er wird right? sitzen. As a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. What does he want? Was möchte er? An offering in righteousness. Eine Opfergabe right? in Gerechtigkeit. Okay, verse 4. Vers 4. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the former years. And then it says in verse 5, Dann sagt es in Vers 5, And I will come near to you, to judgment. Where does he? Where does that now point it to? Wohin weist das jetzt hin? Right, the end, right? Das Ende des so he suddenly comes to his temple. Sister White says, the coming to his temple and the coming to execute are two distinct 
and separate events, right? Also Ellen White sagt, dass das Kommen zu seinem Tempel und das Kommen um Gericht auszuführen sind zwei unterschiedliche und äh, verschiedene Ereignisse, getrennte Ereignisse. Okay, so he's going to execute, right? Also wird Gericht ausführen. Right? So, we understand that this is where he does this investigation upon you, right? Verstehen, hier macht er dieses Untersuchungsgericht. When it comes to you personally, Dann right? Kommt es zu dir persönlich. Okay. So, now go go to this quote that I posted. Gehen wir zu dem Zitat, was ich gepostet habe. We're going to go back and we're going to look at Isaiah's experience, right? Gehen wir zurück und werden uns Jesajas Erfahrung anschauen. It says such thoughts as these were crowding through Isaiah's mind as he stood under the portico of the temple. Suddenly, the gate and the inner veil of the temple seemed to be uplifted or withdrawn. What happened? Was Suddenly, right? Plötzlich. That's right here, right? Das ist hier. It says, suddenly the gate and the inner veil of the temple seemed to be uplifted or withdrawn, and he was permitted to gaze within upon the Holy of Holies, where even the prophet's feet might not enter. So where, where was he permitted to see into the Holy of Holies? Wo wurde ihm erlaubt, in das Allerheiligste zu sehen? Right here, right? Here. When you come to this point. Wenn man zu diesem Punkt ankommt. Where even the prophet's feet might not enter, there rose up before him a vision of Jehovah sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. What does he see? Was sieht er? He sees him sitting, right? Sieht ihn sitzen. Right? Well, the train of his glory filled the temple. On each side of the throne hovered the seraphim, their faces veiled in adoration, they ministered before the maker, their maker and united in the solemn invocation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Right? So, he also heard this thing saying, Holy, holy, holy. Right? So, he had also heard, wie sie gesagt haben, heilig, heilig, heilig. So, once he had that vision, right, he's now warning them, about what the Lord is going to do. He's going to suddenly come to his temple, right? Also, sobald er die Vision gehabt hat, warnt er sie jetzt, was ähm, mit ihnen geschehen wird. Der Herr wird hier plötzlich zu seinem Tempel kommen. Right? Okay, now go back to Revelation 4. Gehen wir jetzt zurück zu Offenbarung 4. Because, let's read verse 1 again. Lesen right? wir nochmal Vers 1. It says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard as it were of a trumpet talking with me, we said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Right? I will show thee things which are going to shortly come to pass. Right? Okay. So now when you come to verse 2. Now he's showing him those things which are going to come after. Right? And how does it begin? And immediately, und sofort, I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. It's right here, right? It's here. So he's told to come up hither, right? Because this is where John falls flat and does come up hither, and I will show thee things which are going to shortly come to pass, right? Wird gesagt, komm hier herauf, weil Johannes wird ja hier in den Staub gelegt. Und dann sagt er, komm hier rauf, ich werde dir Dinge zeigen, die in Kürze geschehen sollen. Okay, Vers 3. Vers 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne. What did Ezekiel see here? Was hat Ezekiel hier gesehen? Same thing, right? Dasselbe. Okay, this is why it always bugged me, this is why it said this, right? But das anyway. Deswegen hat mich das immer gewurmt, warum es das hier gesagt hat. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. 
and the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. What's this? Was ist das? It's what Ezekiel saw right here. Das ist was Ezekiel hier gesehen hat. Right? And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying what? Was sagen Sie? Holy, 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 right? Heilig, heilig, heilig. Now we we'll get to the crux, right? Jetzt kommen wir zu diesem Hauptpunkt. Verse 9. Verse 9. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. What do we see? Was können wir sehen? We see the true and the counterfeit, right? 25 wahre Anbeter. Also man kann das wahre und die Fälschung sehen. Right? Because Christ and the 24 elders, right? Weil Christus und die 24 Ältesten. And they, they are this perfect offering, right? Sie sind dieses vollkommene Opfer. Christ was also an offering, right? Christus war auch ein Opfer. Okay, so what you get here, so who would these be? Wer wären die hier? Thorns and thistles, and right? And, and this would be this blade that springs up, this, this righteousness, right? Because it says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. <coughs> right? So, not really, I mean, it's not drastically changing what we have it's the same it begins here and it, and it ends here but the point is that it was pointing forward to this work that's going to be done right in here right it's keine drastische veränderung weil es fängt immer noch hier an und hört hier auf aber es ähm, weist jetzt hier besonders auf diesen punkt hin ähm, wo this work right here. Where dieses werk dann hier tun wird and you have these two classes, right? Man hat diese zwei Klassen. Because this is the close of probation, Weil right? Das ist das Ende der it's too, too late for you to, to, to get rid of those idols now, right? Ist dort zu spät, diese Götzen loszuwerden. So that's why when those 25 men are here, bowing down, presenting their sacrifice, the Lord doesn't hear their prayers anymore. Deswegen, wenn diese 25 Männer hier anbeten und ihr Opfer bringen, hört der Herr ihre Gebete nicht mehr. They, they had all this opportunity to cast out the bondwoman and they chose to hold on to it. Right? Also, sie hatten hier die ganze Möglichkeit, diese um, Markt hinauszuwerfen, aber sie haben gewählt, das zu behalten, daran festzuhalten. Amen? Amen. Okay. And, uh, brothers and sisters, we really need to look at those illustrations and take them as if they are speaking directly to us. Right? Geschwister, wir müssen wirklich diese Darstellungen nehmen und sie so annehmen, als würden sie direkt zu uns sprechen. We, we are these people here with these evil hearts continuously. Right? Wir sind diese Leute hier mit diesen bösen Herzen, die wir ständig böse sind. Hearts that deceive us, that we can't trust what the heart says. Right? Herzen, die uns verführen. Wir können einfach nicht vertrauen, was sie uns sagen. God wants the people that are going to trust in a thus saith the Lord. God right? möchte Menschen haben, die in ein so spricht der Herr vertrauen. Okay, that it is going to cleanse the heart of every false way. Right? Er wird das Herz reinigen von jedem falschen Weg. And he, he's going to come right here before us and look into our hearts. Right? Er wird hier zu uns kommen und er wird in unsere Herzen schauen. Okay, and it will be seen. There's any real faith in the promises, right? Because when Ezekiel came up here, what was the condition of God's people? Still the same, right? So what's it going to seem like? It's going to seem like you're this 25 men right here, right? Okay. But if you've been doing this work of sign of crying correctly and getting rid of those things out of your heart, 
the ground will be broken up, right? Aber wenn du hier in dieser Zeit dieses äh, richtige Werk von Seufzen und Klagen getan hast, dann wird dein Herz aufgebrochen werden. And the only difference between them and them is that the seed is able to find entrance into their hearts. Right? Der einzige Unterschied zwischen die hier und denen hier ist, dass der Same dann eintritt und dein Herz erhalten kann. Okay. And immediately brings forth fruit. Und right? sofort bringt es dann Frucht hervor. So Christ is able to save you, right? Also Christus ist in der Lage dich zu retten. These men he couldn't save. Diese Menschen konnte er nicht retten. And therefore he won't hear their prayers anymore. Deswegen wird er ihre Gebete nicht mehr hören. Right? We're, we're all the same. Wir sind alle dasselbe. None of us are better than one another. Keiner ist besser als der andere. And it's just about will we hear and, and realize our true condition and sign crack. Es right? geht nur darum, ob wir hören werden und unseren wahren Zustand hier ähm, erkennen werden und seufzen und klagen. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's close with that. Dann lass uns mit einem Gebet abschließen. Ich danke dir, dass du uns immer und immer wieder diese Darstellungen zeigst. Und bitte hilf uns, dass wir unseren wahren Zustand verstehen. Und dass wir diese Reinigung brauchen, die nur du zur Verfügung stellen kannst. Please give us the will to, yeah, to follow you. Bitte gib uns den Willen, dir zu folgen. And let our heart be cleansed. Und lass unsere Herzen gereinigt werden. And let those stony hearts be broken up, so the seed can enter. Und lass diese steinernen Herzen aufgebrochen werden, dass der Same eintreten kann. And let us um, always trust in your word. Und lass uns immer dein Wort vertrauen. Disregarding the circumstances which may seem hopeless. Ganz gleich den Umständen, die hoffnungslos scheinen mögen. Please lead us through this day today. Bitte führe uns heute durch diesen Tag. Let us come back here in the evening. Und hilf uns, dass wir dann auch am Abend wieder zurückkommen können. Please bless all those who are listening via the live stream. Und bitte segne auch all diejenigen, die über den Livestream zuschauen. Thank you, Jesus. Ich danke dir in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen.